but when he picked up the phone to call his children, he couldn't get through. No response. And then I realized, oh my God, here's what they did. They already had me declared a suppressive person. They told everyone else, including my children. I cried. That's sad, you know, it's my kids. But you don't do that to a parent. You don't do that. So. Did you talk to your kids after that? A spokesperson for the children told Four Corners that claiming that the Church of Scientology is the reason for a disconnection from his children does not tell the entire story. Joe decided long before 2005 by his own actions to separate himself from his family, an assertion that Joe Reich denies. Why was Joe Reich declared a suppressive person? I have no idea. I have no idea. It's news to me. I, I, actually, know, I actually know Joe Reich. I, I remember meeting him many years ago. He was somebody that I knew personally uh, when I first started working with the church. I, in fact, I had no idea he'd even been expelled from the church. But once you expel someone from the church, you tell that person's family inside the church to have nothing to do with them. No, that is not the case. What, 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 specifically what you're referring to is if somebody is expelled from the church, um, anybody who insists on continuing to be connected to somebody who's been expelled from the church would be told that as long as they maintain that connection, they're not welcome in the church because a church, any organization, and particularly a church like other churches, has a right to not welcome in its, in its, uh, in its ranks people who are supporting or connected to people who are attacking the church and meaning the church harm. In Australia, other families have experienced the intense pain of disconnection from their children in the church. Liz Anderson hasn't seen her eldest child Fiona since 2005 when she was posted overseas from Sydney to work in the Sea Org in Clearwater, Florida. Now all she has left are these few mementos of Fiona's childhood. The tiger's netball club. Look, she's a beautiful girl. I mean, I just, uh, and she's mine. But I, I, I can't take the parent away. <laughs> I'll try. How painful is it for all of you that Fiona is still in the church? Well, I love my wife dearly, and um, there's been many times I've seen her just so distraught at the fact that um, she can't have contact with her daughter. It's a very cruel doctrine, a very cruel policy to separate uh, family members from each other on pain of being expelled from the church. Well. Um... Let me put it this way, uh, considering just uh, in the last couple of days and on my last uh, trip to Clearwater, uh, I saw Miss Peachy walking down the street, um, I believe, come to think of it, the street that she was walking down, I saw two or three pay phones uh, that she most capably could have stopped, picked up the phone and called whomever she wished to speak with. So if she wanted to speak to her mother, I am sure she's perfectly capable of doing so. Fiona Peachy, who is now 25 years old, has told Four Corners that while she loves her mother, she can't have any contact with her while her mother insults her religion. You want a cup of tea? The Anderson family's involvement with Scientology goes back 27 years. <laughs> Liz and James were both married before, and they spent their early adult lives in the Sea Org. <laughs> When they became a couple, they fled the Sea Org and were expelled from the church. That is, um, as a Scientologist, quite degrading. You know, your children are told you're a suppressive person. It's busy in this kitchen today. <laughs> what action happened here? For years after being expelled, the Andersons worked to get back into favour with the church. Eventually, they were allowed back in as public Scientologists. And when Fiona was 14 years old, the Sea Org came asking for her. 
you're indoctrinated as a parent that the best thing for your child to save them is to pull them out of the school system because they're corrupt and put them either on in the Sea Org, which would be ideal, or in a, working in an org, a lower organisation. Scared of the consequences if she refused, her mother took Fiona to Sydney. She's got the biggest brown eyes, Fiona, and they just melt your heart. And she looked at me and she had signed the Billy New contract. She said, but can I just come home, Mum? And I said to her, don't ever ring me and say you want to come home because I can't do that for you because you'll be, a, you'll be declared a suppressive person if I take you. I violate so many rules as a parent. I was signed over guardianship of our girl. Fiona was recruited into the Sea Org at the youngest legal age for a child to leave school and start work. And I stepped away. That's, that's what you do. When you're indoctrinated and you've been declared a suppressive person, you're continually making up amends. So part of my amends is that I raised a beautiful daughter and I gave her to the church. right or wrong, I take responsibility for my actions. In 2005, Liz and James allowed their youngest child, Jordan, to follow in Fiona's footsteps. I wanted to join the Sea Org ever since I was two years old. Um, I remember walking around saying I'm going to be a counsellor in the Sea Org. I love the uniform and I wanted to have that honour as a Sea Org member. So I signed a contract for a billion years. Why do you recruit children into the Sea Org? Uh, actually, we don't. Um, it's um, uh, well, well, there I are parents think... out there who would say you do. The Andersons, for example, would certainly say that you've done that. Okay. Well, in their individual case, fine. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that the church doesn't discriminate against people by virtue of age. When she arrived at the Sea Org, age 14, Jordan was asked to give a detailed account of her private life something she herself would later demand of other recruits. You've had no sexual relations. You've had, you haven't masturbated. You never watched a porn movie. You know, like they really um, pull it to shreds and pieces and you, like they even say you haven't had sex with an animal. Jordan Anderson was posted to the HCO, the Hubbard Communications Office in Sydney, where she worked as a personnel control officer. She says she had an average of three days off a year. The job carried great responsibilities, the pay was minimal, and the hours excessive. I stayed up 72 hours once, just trying to get someone approved to go auditor training overseas. 72 hours without sleep? Mm. And you were 15 at the mm. time? Well, if that is actually the case, that would be utterly and completely unacceptable. The Sea Org provided Jordan with free board and lodging here in Sydney. But her work involved long hours, and once, she says, when she failed to recruit a member of the public, she was severely punished. She was told to scrub out a dumpster. We didn't have any gloves, we had no masks. I was in my uniform pants and an old T-shirt. But there was no OH&S. I mean, they were violating every single point that I know of, of her h &S. And I was there until two o'clock in the morning. It was just putrid. I couldn't believe it. I would never do that to somebody. When Liz Anderson heard what had happened to her daughter, she was incensed. I was angry. Don't get me wrong. If I could have gone up there and, and King hit... The very individual that signed my daughter to scrubbing out a dumpster, I would have been there. Was I angry? You betcha. Was that gonna was that gonna drive me to make a point? You betcha. Is that why I'm here today? Yes it is. 
It sounds ridiculous and extreme. I, I, I question its its credibility. I question its veracity. I don't know. I don't know who Jordan Anderson is, and, and I don't know when that occurred. I don't know who it was who was involved in it or why it is she would have done that. Jordan Anderson's experience is echoed by another young woman on the other side of the world in Los Angeles. Laura de Crescenzo is one of a small group of former Scientologists who are taking the church to court in America for alleged violations of workplace legislation. Like Jordan Anderson, Laura says she had to work excessive hours and was once asked to scrub out a dumpster. Someone came up to me and said, okay, you need to come downstairs with me. So we went downstairs and she handed me a toothbrush and said, um, you need to clean this dumpster with a toothbrush. And I said, you, no. I said, you gotta be kidding me. No, I'm not gonna do that. Laura de Crescenzo has backed her allegations with sworn statements and other former Scientologists have as well. The church accuses the American litigants of lacking credibility and having ulterior motives. You're taking the church to court. Why are you doing that? Um, the, the, my lawsuit covers um, human trafficking, labor law violations, and forced abortions. And um, there's many reasons. I mean, obviously, I, I came to realize that if no one ever has the strength to stand up and say the truth of what went on, then it will only um, continue and get worse. My court case in the United States is basically alleging that they should be paying minimum wage. That's pretty much it, that, that there's human trafficking going on, which is basically um, holding people to work for a, a wage that's uh, less than what they should be being paid and not allowing them to just leave if they want to leave. One issue in the courts will be the fact that the church doesn't pay its staff in the Sea Org a minimum wage. It argues that members of the Sea Org are not employees, but volunteers who don't expect to be paid. We do so out of our own religious conviction and our desire to to work for and be part of and contribute to our religion and its activities, um, and as a such, we don't as such we don't expect a wage, um, and it, we don't do it for a wage. However, Mark Headley says he signed a contract of employment similar to this one when he joined the Sea Org, and was promised a minimum wage. Fifteen years later, I was paid an average of thirty-eight cents an hour for working over 100 hours a week, every single week of every year for 15 years. In 15 years, I made a total of $29,000 for 100 hours a week, every week. When Mark and Claire met, they were posted to one of the church's most secure Sea Org facilities at Hemet, two hours drive outside Los Angeles. The facility is surrounded by high fences topped with razor wire. What did the church tell you about people who wanted to leave? Um, that um, people in the C organization have foregone the right to, to leave. Um, and that was reiterated on many different instances. I mean, honestly, um, I've reflected since leaving. And the only thing that even comes close for me in, in terms of living conditions and everything else is prison. <laughs> Just is. Claire Headley joined the Sea Org age 16 and worked for the Religious Technology Center, earning as little as $23 a week. How hard was it doing that job? Um, words don't describe it. I mean, uh, you know, there was um, two, two to three year periods where um, if I slept at all, it was in an office chair or on a floor or two hours in a bed. Um, I very, very rarely saw Mark 